Welcome to the Radiation Oncology Division of Blue Ridge Healthcare here at Valdez Hospital. Valdez Hospital has had a radiation oncology department since 1967. Uh, that's when the hospital administration decided to take the recommendation from Dr. Emmett White and purchase the first cobalt unit that was here. This was a stationary cobalt unit. The patients actually had to get up and turn over in order to treat the front and the back. Those type of cobalt units never exist in uh, the United States anymore, and it was replaced by two different cobalt units before uh, 1991 when I arrived on the scene and Dr. White retired. That was the year that the hospital decided to purchase the first linear accelerator. We bought a state-of-the-art linear accelerator then, and since that time we've replaced it uh, two other times basically with upgrades of the same uh, brand, the top brand name in the United States currently and the most popular in the world and top of the line machines. We're going to walk through the department and show you a few things about what we have to offer. This is our exam room area. When we remodeled the department back in uh, early 19. 91 and 92, we developed these three areas for exam room and consultation. I'm real proud of what we did just a year and a half ago to upgrade our consult area. Our consult area is the, the first impression that our patients get and it's a very comfortable room, comfortable chairs, and generally speaking, the day of consult is the longest day for our patients. My philosophy is that one of the greatest needs for the cancer patient is to have a uh, very clear idea of exactly what they are getting into. We like to impart a lot of information on the first day. Uh, consult frequently takes an hour to an hour and a half, sometimes even longer, depending upon the depth of the information that we have to cover and the severity of the problem. Sometimes it's pretty complex, just putting all the pieces together and then helping the patient understand what I understand about their situation so that we can make decisions together about their treatment. Many of the pictures on the walls here in the Radiation Oncology Division were brought over when we came to this facility from Grace Hospital. There was a time when we had radiation therapy facilities both at Grace Hospital and Valdez Hospital and when we were at Grace, uh, uh, one of our local citizens donated these pictures to the facility and we're real proud to have uh, many wildflower pictures that are taken right here in the county. Uh, on our walls. We're fortunate to have separate areas for men's and women's dressing and waiting area. These are comfortable small rooms. Uh, these uh, rooms are not used until the patient actually starts their therapy and when they actually begin therapy then they will come to these comfortable areas to wait after putting on a gown if that is necessary for their treatment. Sometimes the men will just sit in here and wait their turn and when they're called in they can prepare by taking off their shirt or whatever's necessary in the treatment room. We try to keep it as simple as we can. We know that people don't really enjoy sitting around in hospital gowns. This is the, the waiting area for the uh, women that are getting radiation therapy. It's a little bit larger and uh, perhaps even more comfortable than the men's waiting area and then you'll see back through the door there, this specific changing area with lockers for clothing. So uh, we, we offer a, a, a nice, comfortable place while people wait for their radiation therapy. This is the simulation room or treatment planning room. In this room we house the treatment planning CT scanner. This CT scanner is just like a, a CT scanner that might be found in a diagnostic radiology suite with the exception of about two very important things. First of all, the table itself is specially designed. This is a flat table as opposed to being a contoured table and it completely mimics the table that we use to have the patients rest upon while receiving the radiation therapy. Another important factor would be the bore or the hole in the CT scanner. It is quite a bit larger than a regular CT scanner and this allows for very uh, 
unique positioning of patients as necessary to cover the areas that we want to cover. One of the other un unusual things about this room is this array here along the side of the CT scanner. This, another area on the ceiling and on the other side of the room have lasers that can be altered in their direction and adjustment and these are utilized in order to make our initial marks on the patient based on my analysis of the CT scan. So the first day of treatment planning, a patient would come into this room, they would be positioned in an appropriate way for treatment of the area of the body that we intend to, to analyze and treat. And the scan is accomplished. I am called into the uh, room behind the uh, windows here to analyze that on the computer. After my analysis, we set the initial planned fields of radiation. These are projected back through the system and these lasers then allow us to isolate these areas on the body, mark the patients, and that day the patient gets up, has finished for the day, and goes home. They don't even return until a couple of days later when we begin their treatment. That day, the first day of treatment planning is just a data gathering day and it is a, a rather long day and rather intense from our standpoint, rather simple for the patient because all they have to do is relax upon the table. We are able to set the lasers to specific areas based on the analysis of the CT scan. If I pick a specific area that I want to set as what we call the isocenter, that is the, the focus of therapy, then we can set it so that these lasers direct us to the points that correlate with that internal spot, but they correlate externally on the skin. So then we use a paint marker to mark that area on the skin. And in, on some occasions, we actually will then take that laser mark and use a little drop of India ink and put a tiny pinprick for a permanent subcutaneous or under the skin tattoo, a very small black dot under the skin so that if the paint marker completely rubs off, we have a permanent record of exactly what the data that we uh, obtained on the CT scan, exactly what it correlates with on the skin so that we don't have to come back in here and collect that data again if the marks get lost. The data that is gathered during the treatment planning day is analyzed in the physics and dosimetry suite by some behind the scenes personnel from the department. We have a full-time medical physicist and a full-time medical dosimetrist. The dosimetrist is a term that's not used very commonly, but only in radiation oncology departments. This person is an expert with the computers and even more so an expert in helping to translate my intentions of what I want to treat from a clinical standpoint based on the type of cancer, the extent of the cancer, and what we see on the CT scans. They translate that into how are we going to actually get the radiation to that area and make it in such a way that it affects the normal tissue as little as possible and gets the best dose of radiation to the target volume or the area that we want to treat most efficiently.